Okay, here we go. No malice. Welcome yes, back. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Good to be here. Yo, me and you actually go way, way back. Because I've been doing clips interviews since before Vlad TV, back when I was doing DVDs and mixtapes. Bro, I'm sure. I'm definitely sure. That's what's up. Yeah, it's been Yeah, a man. Well, congratulations on everything. You definitely have a have an incredible legacy and, and you know, an unbelievable body of work. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. It's, it's been a long road and, um, you know, I believe it's still going to continue. Absolutely, man. You look great. You look healthy. Thank you. You, know, Thank you. Thank can't you ask for much. more than that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. So, you know, we've done other interviews before, but I would like to just kind of go through the timeline of how you got to this place of where you are now, because I feel like the history of, of, you know, no malice in the clips is very important and not everybody knows it. Right. So you grew up in Virginia. I guess you were born in the Bronx, but you you grew up in Virginia Beach. That's right. That's right. Born in the Bronx, uh, Bronx, Lebanon. It was just an incident there, too. Um, I don't know if you heard about it or whatever. But Yeah, the, the hospital. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we lived uh, on Gun Hill Road in Tilden Towers. And at a young age, I was eight when we came to Virginia. So, yeah, Virginia Beach. Okay. Now, growing up, you were actually raised in the church. Yeah, we, we went to church. Okay. Now, was that just uh, going to church every so often, or were you guys really deep into the whole church? No, question? no, we were, we were never deep into the church thing, but uh, church was not taboo for us. You know, it would be nothing for my mom to say, get up this Sunday, y'all going to church, you know. But um, it wasn't like every Sunday, you know, on schedule we were in the church. But church was uh, definitely not taboo for us. Sure. Now, at one point, you and your brother start getting mixed up with the wrong people and getting involved in, in drugs and alcohol. Like, at what age did that really start happening? Well, um, I wouldn't say alcohol. I mean, drank just like, you know, any young kid kid might drink or going out to the clubs, you know, um, having a drink. But, um, and I can't even call them the wrong people because uh, those guys were our friends, are our friends, you know. Um, 15, uh, when I was in uh, Brandon uh, Middle School, junior high, uh, that's when we you know, got into the things that we got involved with concerning drugs. Okay. So at 15... And, and, and keep, in mind, how... keep, keep, in, keep in mind, I'm almost five years older than Pusher, so he was, you know, coming up after me. Oh, okay. So you're 15 and he's 10. Right. So, so you start getting involved into the drugs things, into the drugs and initially in terms of selling and so forth? What is this about, man? What is this about? But yeah, well, yeah we're gonna, definitely. We're going we're gonna to get into everything. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. But, but, you know, I think what's important is is the story and the development and how you got here. You see no, what I'm no, saying? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm just still very cautious of things I say. But yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think it's pretty much known. Uh, 15. Um, see, when, I, when we came here from New York, we had two cousins here that basically had this housing project sewn up uh, called Bridal Creek. And these guys, they grew like freakishly big at a young age and nobody would ever mess with them, you know? So it was very easy for, for me to go out because my cousins ran everything, you know? At first they wouldn't even let me get down with anything that was going on. But, you know, after a while you learn the ropes, hanging out, everybody knowing you and knowing not to mess with you. So it was, you know, kind of easy. Okay, so you started hustling and making money at 15. Right. At what point did your brother start getting involved in it also? Well, you have to know, okay, so then right out of high school, I, I joined the Army. And when I would come back from the Army, all my friends out there would tell me that, you know, my younger brother Terrence, he was out there a lot. And, um, you know, telling me, you know, what he was doing and he was running with the guys that I was running with when I left, except for I had gotten married and went and joined the army. So it's the same thing with him. Everybody knew my cousins. They knew me. You know, that's that's Terrence. You don't mess with him. And he loved money so much anyway. So that kind of explains how that came about. Okay. Now, at that age of teenagers, what do you think was the worst thing that you guys had to go through? Because, you know, when you talk about, 
you know, selling drugs, especially if you talk about cocaine, that comes with a lot of violence. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what do you think, as a teenager, what was the hardest thing that you went through? I don't think I went through any hard things. You know, we have a dad that's like 6'2", six 6'3", six so we knew not to bring no trouble home. Like, we come from a total uh, functional house. You know, it didn't make sense for us to even be selling drugs. We don't have the proverbial uh, drug selling story. Uh, you know, I had to feed my kids or lights was getting cut out. We were just doing it because we wanted to have the, the latest fashion, the, the, the fly kicks, you know. Um, and even at that age, we were very intellectual. So we had the, the all of the the benefits of the drug dealing without all the, the nonsense. Okay. So at what point do you and your brother start looking at rap as as something that could potentially be serious? Well, Pusha, he never really even had an interest, you know, in, in rap music at first. And, and and when I say that, I mean actually rapping. Like, he would ask me questions it's like, you know, why do you like this guy as opposed to that guy in rapping? And I would always, you know, break down cats like uh, Boogie Down Productions, KRS-One, um, Big Daddy Kane. And I would always tell him, or I remember telling him, I would like, these guys because they have something to say. It was a message. Um, not only was it a message, but it was the structure of the lyrics. I remember like hearing like two lines that rhyme, then the next two lines, uh, you know, they would rhyme, and then like by the fifth line, it'll go back up to the first two lines that rhyme, and that was just a rhyme scheme that I just absolutely loved. So I would, you know, tell my brother, um, you know, what what I saw in hip hop and, and, and what I liked about it and why I chose this guy over that guy or whatever. But um, I always knew that I could rhyme. So at what point did you guys decide to form the clips and, and name it that? Well, you know, um, the reason why I never took rap too seriously because I thought being famous was always something that happened to someone else. So even though I was known around the neighborhood for rapping, it wasn't until I met with uh, real producers, guys that could make, you know, really good beats. Um, we had a crew called DDP, Def Dual Productions. Actually, we were a gang and everybody had a partner. And, uh, you know, my man had told me he was kind of like the leader of us all. He said, I met this guy who, who makes beats and uh, you should check him out because he's really hot. And that guy was Timbaland, you know, and Timbaland was was in his crew too, DDP, and he would make beats for all of us. You know, we just like to rap and beat up people. So that was kind of like our thing at that time or whatever. And um, then, then after, you know, Timbaland got signed and he was doing the whole Missy and the, the, the Jodeci thing and, and, and all of that. And, um, you know, I met Pharrell and, and we had like mutual friends and, and met Chad. And, um, you know, we just always would go to Chad's house and we would spit rhymes and, you know, they had, even at that time, incredible beats and, um, you know, just hanging out rhyming. And it wasn't until one time where Pusha actually uh, wanted to get down. He wrote his first rap ever. I remember it was called A Thief in the Night was the name of the song. And he like totally crushed it. I mean, first rap ever. And seeing as how, I didn't like to do a lot of writing and he didn't like to do a lot of writing. It was like the perfect storm. We come together, you write 16, I write 16, and then we both split an eight, song done. 